Himay. Hindi. Nakapapang. Hindi nga man. Well, we just arrived. Me and Andy chose peg four, which is a nice big double swim. We've got plenty of water to play with. We've got the river just behind us in case we decide to fling a rod in there. And I'm itching to get the rods out. We'll catch you in a bit. So it's the end of the first day, me and Andy have come up with a bit of a plan for our swim. What we've done is my left hand and my middle rod are cast to the far margin and Andy's middle rod and his right hand rod is cast to his far margin which has allowed the two rods in the middle to go on a baited spot. From looking online, all the fish have been coming from the far margin. Now, I don't know whether or not that's because everyone's read it online and have done the same thing and that's just where the bait's going in but we wanted to try something a bit different as well. So. On the two middle rods we've, we've tried to build a bit of a swim we've we didn't want to put big baits in because the lads last week had a really hard time uh the fish actually started spawning while they were here they didn't spawn for long but they were spawning from the friday till the sunday then the weather changed and um it stopped and the bite started to pick up for them but they didn't have a very good week so for that reason we decided to go for hemp and maggot get the hemp and maggot on the baited spots while well, on the baited spot and then just fish singles to the far margin for the first night um, or for the first day um, so far nothing much has happened Stu is on the next peg down for he's on peg three he actually lost the fish he had to get in a boat um, to row over it took him through a snag in the far margin um, unfortunately he lost the fish but he's gone out with a weed rake now and, and rake that far margin in to try and create a bit of a clear spot and take that snag out which he got out in the end but other than that, um, I don't think there's much else I really want to do with it. I think I'm I'm quite confident with my singles. I'm going to leave the baiting spot, just keep trickling the baiting throughout the week and hopefully, fingers crossed, the fish will move in on it before, before the end of the week. And I'm going to go to bed. See you later. So I've had a pretty good day today. I've opened my account on the lake. I started off with a... 33 pound mirror which was caught on my left hand rod um, I'm fishing over to a far margin um, my right hand rod is still on the baited spot still um, my left hand rod ripped off this after, well about lunch time ish would you say Andy? Maybe about lunch time? Um, my left hand rod ripped off and that was just on a multi rig very basic with a little pineapple pop up just popped up off the deck with a very very small amount of hemp nothing no huge quantities of bait going in just a very very small quantity of hemp fish to the far margin once i got the 33 back in the lake it must have been a couple of hours later we were sat down and my mill rod absolutely melted um got up and hit it played the fish in got it in and it turned out to be a cracking 42 pound mill
really, really impressed with that. It's still fishing pretty hard. There's not much coming out. Um, Carl's had a grassy on the next peg down. Stu's not had anything yet. Um, Garn's still still struggling. Um, it's. It, I think we're not in for an easy week, but fingers crossed we can sort of pull something out of the bag. I'm still hoping that the the baited spot does start producing. Um, if if it stays as it is and nothing comes off the baited spot, what I'm, we're possibly going to do is push the baited spot back to about 20, 25 wraps. Um, at the minute we're at 14 and a half still. Um, we're not putting much over there, but we just keep trickling it in. A couple of bait bolts every now and again. Again, still sticking to the hemp and the maggot. And obviously, if, as we bring in fish in, um, if it starts to produce, we'll start reducing the particle and the and the maggot start increasing boily and start putting things in like maize um, and hopefully still it, it works out all right but fingers crossed so the sun's going down it's Monday afternoon well Monday evening should I say about six o'clock um, nothing much has happened today um, we bobbed into town did a bit of shopping Bought a float, bought some size 20 hooks, and we've done a bit of bit bashing the margin. Um, Stu's had a 36 pound common out um, from the far margin again. Still, n no indications that fish are feeding on the on the baited spot. Not with the liners have stopped. Nothing much is going on. We put a bit more bait on the baited spot. Um, I've rechucked again to the far margin, keeping rigs the same. I've gone for a blowback on my middle rod. Um, with a 20 mil and a 50 mil pop up, I'm keeping my multi rig on just a small 50 mil pop up. Um, yeah, very very little to report. Um, we're going to give it another another day. If the baited spot hasn't produced, um, we're going to move it back from 14 and a half wraps to to probably about 20, possibly 25, um, depending on if we see any jumping out or anything like that. But yeah, it's it's fishing hard. Um, it's it's not it's not the the lake I thought it was. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than this. Um, but again, there are some absolute monsters in here. Um, what did they go to? Seventy. Yeah, yeah there's a, there's a seventy in here. There's, there's lot. There's a, there's a fair few fifties as well to go at. Um, but yeah, um, it is seeming to be a bit more challenging than we expected. But we'll keep you in the loop, and we'll speak to you tomorrow. Relight my fire. Your love is <laughs> what day are we on? Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a, a pretty quiet day again, right up until about an hour ago. Um Andy noticed there was a lot of fish jumping on the far margin. Um so he tied up a ten foot zig using our new zig foam and the zig aligners. Um he's gone for a black foam with a red liner. Um fishing ten foot, so he's just about a foot, maybe two foot under the surface. Um, he's sinking his line. Lead couldn't have hit the bottom for more than more than a minute, and and the rod just just tore off. Um, 22, 23, 22, 22, 22 pound common. Common, yeah. Yeah. Common. Crap memory, sorry. Um, so twenty two pound common. Um, yeah, it was re really nice fish, and it, it was nice to see um, fish caught in the because. We, we the, everyone struggled on the lake. Um, like I say, I had a couple um, on Sunday, but other than that, it's been a bit, it's been quiet. Um, so I'm going to play it by ear. Andy's going to leave his ten foot zig out. He's, he's, he's made another one. Reach up that. Um, fucking midgets. Being harassed by mosquitoes. Um, we actually went live yesterday on Facebook with um, the size of my foot. Um, it's ballooned up and we've got a hell of a lot of midges and horse flies but when I say horse flies they're like pigeons they're absolutely massive and I've been annihilated on my foot and it sort of just merges into one big fucking thing in comparison to my other foot that I can actually get a sock on Go, nice normal foot. John Merrick's foot. 
So, um, um, but yeah, so he's reached up to Stanford Zig out. Um, if he gets a knock or if he, if he, if he has another fish, then I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll move over. Um, but as it stands, like I say, I'm still focusing on the far margin. I've still got my baited spot. I'm going to give it another day um, and push it back to 20 foot, I mean 20 wraps. Um, if not, I, I might even do it this, this evening. Um, I'm a bit undecided. I'm going to play it by ear. Um, but yeah, so we'll uh, keep you in the loop if anything happens. Yeah, so my, my original strategy, um, we wasn't sure whether the fish had spawned, whether they were halfway through spawning, the weather's been really mixed and varied. So we got here, they showed signs of spawning last week and Bill said, you know, some had spawned, some hadn't. And we, we just weren't sure. Um, on that first day, one thing that I did do is when I pulled some of the weed out, it did have fish eggs in. So I was kind of like, oh, they might have actually spawned there, which is pretty good. Um, and like I say, Rick had had a couple in open water, which was kind of good. He caught his on on singles, and that was the approach. Uh, he had a, a really nice um, 40 pound mirror, uh, and he also had a smaller mirror as well. I think around about mid 20, 25, 26, something like that. Two really nice fish, though. And he'd used a similar approach as I had, which was you know not a lot of bait, single baits, and we'd used you know Ronnie rigs uh, with single pop-ups over these beds of particle that's got plenty of yellow in so a little yellow pop-ups and that was doing the trick um, and that's what my first fish fell to and that's what slack his fish fell to as well um, so I did that for a couple of days and I didn't really have much so I thought I'd just you know have a bit of a change and anyone who knows me knows I love the slip D rig so that's what I did I, I used the slip D rig instead of using a single bait though because I'm using quite big hooks I could get away with putting quite a big cured boily on there, uh, uh, DNA S7 Evo with uh, half uh, a little po half a pop-up um, which just made it sit up nice off the bottom, big up, lay flat, slip D uh, and then I started getting a few, um, I got that stupid sturgeon, I've had it twice now, wiped out my rods both times I've had it, absolute pain but never had a sturgeon before so it's pretty good, you know I've got a few pictures and that and then um, yeah, got got a couple of fish steady. fish steady and then last night I had a, a real big hit I was having a bit of a social around about sort of 10 o'clock and my first rod went off and um, yeah it was the sturgeon great got my rods back in it took ages because he wiped all three out as usual and about midnight or so I got a 22 um, I didn't take pictures lazy of me but I didn't want to I wanted to get my rods back in basically, it was only a 22, we'd had, we'd, we'd had bigger fish and we knew we was going to get bigger fish so a um, bit lazy but I got a match shot just to prove to the boys that I'd caught one, um, slipped him back, um, then I lost one and then I got another one which I think was 26 again, wanted to get my rods back out, didn't want to mess around sacking fish up for all night, such a small fish so he went back without pictures. And then I got a, a common around about the 30 mark. Um, these are all falling to this um, slip D with the, you know, with the, the sort of snowman set up on there. And then I netted this this 30 common, and I dipped all my rods in the water because obviously it's the dead deep margin. So when these fish go up at the margins, they just take out all your lines. So I, 
I dipped my lines. Uh, luckily, this fish hadn't touched either of my lines, which was great. I had the fish in the net, and just as I bit my leader, I noticed my rod, my real my spool going on my rod. So I left that fish in the net, hit this fish, and I could tell straight away it was massive. Um, yeah, when I hit it on the far bank, it felt like I was snagged like they always do at range, you know, prop, standard big fish at range sort of uh, sort of fight. A couple of kicks every now and again. You just knew it was a lump. It took me ages to get it in. All the time, this common was good as gold sat in the net. Finally did get it in, um, and it was a 53 mirror uh, over the moon with, to be honest. I thought it was bigger than that. Head, girth, massive, absolutely massive. I could have sworn it was a 60, really could have. Um, I was tired, I couldn't get it up the bank on me on my own. Um, luckily it was it was quite close to uh, to dawn, so got my big retainer, put it in the retainer, and um, and yeah, and that's where we're at at the moment. What I do generally do in the day is, the first couple of days I left the rods out and I didn't have anything. And rather than, you know, have lines in, in, in quite tight spots all day, I wind in through the day, you know, go to the supermarket, have a shower, have a catch up with the lads. You know, if you wind in at 10 o'clock before you know it, it's two o'clock. You've got to do your, you know, your, your sort of your daily visit round to the far margin, putting your bait in. Um, by the time you've done that, you cook yourself some tea and it's, you know, three, four o'clock, ready to get the rods back out again. And that's what we did a couple of hours ago now they've been in. Not expecting anything until sort of, you know, the sun starts to set. You, you start to show and then you, you've kind of got to be on your toes and ready for uh, ready for a run. So that's where we're at and uh, hopefully we'll get a few more tonight. So I've been having a few fish on the slip day, my favourite rig. I thought I'd show you how to tie it. So basically, um, strip back, you know, five, six inches of coated braid, put your nail in it, strip it back. Done this one already just to save myself a bit of time. And um, take your hook, and what we're going to do is we're going to pass this through the front of the hook, back through the back of the eye of the hook. Once you got it back through, you should have a loop behind the back of your hook. Just put that together. And now what we need next is a mini ring swivel. Take your ring swivel and the actual big loose eye of the swivel, we're going to slide on that loop that we've created and flatted out. Now, I like mini ring swivels. You can use uh, bait screws and you can use our new 360 bait screws as well, um, which gives you the same flexibility as these uh, mini ring swivels. I've just been using these for that long, you know. Um, yeah, just force about it really. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this loop and we're going to force the hook through the loop that we've created. Like so. And then we're going to tighten it all down. And what you should be left with is a D behind your hook. May I make mine just so it's sort of like, you know, uh, against the barb of the hook. That's about generally the right sort of uh, length. Okay, now what we're going to do, cut off about 12 inches and we're going to just basically tie a whipping knot, um, like a knotless knot, but what you've got to remember to do is, with this spare bit of line you've got from the from the slip D, put it down the, the shank of your hook and we're going to whip that in as well just so your D can't move. So as usual, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then back through the eye of the hook with the end of the braid. And once that's done, tie it all down, and then you've got your dip, you've got your slip day. All we're going to do, we're just going to neaten it up. First thing we do is we're going to get one of our large kickers. And now, because of the, the shape of this hook, 
you don't want to use all the kicker because you're going to close that gape up. So all I do is cut the tip of the kicker off just so it's less aggressive. And then we're going to slide this down the hook link, wet it a little bit and push that over the eye of the hook. Yeah, pretty tight these, but that's a, good, that's a good thing. And what you want to do, you want to just cover, just cover the knot up really, just get it a bit neat. You should have just a little bit overhanging at the end, and that then gives you your nice slip day. What, I've, what I like to do um, is just tie these so there's probably a half an inch of um, braid left bare uh, with coating off just to give it some movement. Then what I'm going to do is slide on an anti-tangle sleeve I'm going to just tie a loop so we can click that onto our uh, quick chain swivel because uh, I, I generally use these on helicopter rigs. Uh, I want about 7 inches for our fishing here. Yeah, that's about right. So we just lay the line together, create a loop, twist to give it a figure 8 and then back through the, back through the hole. I like to keep these as small as possible really, that's not too bad. There we do, snip off the excess. You don't have to go too tight because uh, your anti-tangle sleeve is going to cover that. Push your anti-tangle sleeve over and that is then ready to put on to your quick change swivel, swivel. One last thing that I like to do is using a bit of putty, which you've got down here. It's two little blobs. One, where the, where the uncoated braid meets the coated braid, like so. And one, just a little bit further down Probably about halfway down the hook link. Again, only a little blob. Now normally I fish this rig with a with a wafter, um, but because uh, the fish are having it, I've decided to use um, a pop up. Well, half a pop up as well as a bottom bait. I'm using the DNA S7, so I've matched it with the half tone. Beauty of this is, you know, you've got your, you've got your food bait on there, but you've also got a matching visual, which you know, which is the same sort of taste and smell as the uh, as the bait under it. So all I do, because I've got a little bit of OCD, is cut the pop up in half, shave probably an eighth off the boiler, put them together. And I get my baiting needle and push it through the pop-up side first, all the way through the boiler, like so. Get a piece of floss. Like so. Pick our rig back up. Put the floss through the through the eye of the swivel. Losing light a little bit here, so it's getting a little bit difficult to see. And then we just hook that on. Push everything down. Pull the excess through. Slide the barley down onto the swivel. 
and all I do is touch this. Snip me floss, give it, you know, half an inch. Lighter. Burn it down all the way down. <laughs> Blow it out. Press your lighter against it, it creates a nice blob. That's your slip day. And that will now hook or lay flat. And that bait will just sit just above it, like so. So the hook's mast, that's why you can get away with such a big hook. That'll fly straight in. When a fish tries to eject, you've got all this separation, so that hook is literally wide open to catch. Absolutely awesome rig. So yeah, now this is the third attempt to tie nest because the first attempt, I caught the sturgeon again, the third time. And the last attempt, I caught a lovely 22 pound common. Um, again, all falling on this exact rig. So yeah, hope that helps and good luck. about four o'clock in the morning and I just had a big fish and Andy Warsap has a unit caught on a 10 foot zig weighing in at um, on a 10 foot zig again we had my uh, 20 pound run loop before this one's Nearly triple the size. I wouldn't say triple. What's your, what's your, where, what's your maths on that? No, <laughs> it's fucking big. It's one scales. <laughs> it's what? It's one scales. <laughs> it's got coming out 58. So. Can't wait for the morning to get some pictures now. Um, so it's like from the daytime. Let's crack open a beer. Yeah.
Yeah, so um, we were sat there chilling out and all of a sudden my right hand rod went off. Ran over, hit that on a 10 foot zig. And then we got it in the sling. Add it in the sling. I mean, add it in the crib probably. What, 30 seconds, Andy? Yeah. 30 seconds, middle rod ripped off, another 10 foot zig. And we've had this one. So we're gonna sling this one back and we'll show you the first one. And so this is the first fish we had. Again, another 10 foot zig, this one on a black and yellow, or a black piece of foam, yellow liner. Again, a size eight hook liner. So we're gonna put them both back and get them both back out again. Hey boy. So me and Andy have had a pretty productive day um, on zigs. Um, so I thought I'd take the chance to show you what we're actually using. Um, these are our new zig liners and zig foam. They're available in red, yellow and black. Um, the aligners come in packs of nine. Um, the foam comes in uh, sticks, you get three sticks in a pack. But we do have bulk um, packs available on the website. So rather than buying nine aligners, you can buy 18 and you do get um, a quite considerable discount the more that you buy. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're really good. Unlike others on the market, they're, they're, they're really flexible, the aligners. You've got, like, I've used others in the past, and when you pull the hook down, the hook rips through the aligner. You end up going through them like they're going out of fashion. Um, you have to use a puller tool with a lot of others as well. These just slide in really nice because of that flexibility you've got um, on the actual product itself. Um, nice little tip for you. Um, when you're putting your zigs in, um, in your zig tool or whatever, whatever sort of story system you have. Um, I can't take credit for this. I saw it on, on Instagram. Um, I can't think who it was who put it on there, but thank you very much if, you, if you're watching this. Um, what I actually do is I code my zigs, because obviously when you're looking at a, a big pack of lots of zigs, it's different, difficult to know whether you're picking one out that's three foot or nine foot and you're going through them. So what I like to do is I like to get a Sharpie and just somewhere on the aligner, um, put a code that I understand. So uh, me personally, a dot is one, so obviously three dots it means I've got three. Um, if I'm putting a line on it, um, a line is two and an X is ten. Um, so this one, for example, is 12 foot. I've got an X, I've got two lines. So it means I can really quickly go through all of my zigs. I can have 30, 40 zigs tied up before a session and very quickly have access to the ones that I, the ones that I need. Um, yeah, that's the kit. It's a really good piece of, piece of kit really cheap really reasonably priced in comparison to what the competitors are selling them for um, especially if you're buying the bulk packs of like 18 aligners um, but yeah that's what we've been using oh yeah so um make sure you give it a go this summer Still big, big fish for Thursday to go about. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Big Fish Thursday. I'm going to pile the bait in Thursday. <laughs> well, no, that's the point of Big Fish Thursday. It's because your bait's already established. Your, your bait's been in there for days. It's not because, oh, it's Thursday. Let's pile some bait in. It's, when, it's because of Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you've been piling bait in. So Thursday, they get on it. <sighs> Big Fish Thursday. Big Fish Thursday. We need a theme tune for Big Fish Thursday. Big Fish Thursday. Na, 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 na. Do you like on this? Is that on the slot machines? Never comes to us. I don't know. Da, da. It is. It's off the claw game. Instant replay. Da, 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 da. Are you trying to win a teddy? So it's Big Fish Thursday. Um, so far, so good. Um, Andy woke me up this morning um, with a double take. Um, two £20 commons. Both off the bottom, off the far margin. Um, we decided to stop the baited swim. It's not produced anything. We've not had a single fish off it. Other than the first day when we put a bit of bait, we had a couple of liners. Other than that, nothing. So we've, we've stopped it. So yeah, and he's had his two off the far margin, both on Ronnie rigs. Um, six o'clock in the morning. Um, within about an hour after we put Andy's fish back in, I had the complete reverse of a big fish Thursday and caught quite possibly the smallest fish in the lake. No more than five pound. Um, little mirror, really nice scale pattern, but yeah, not not really what we've come here for. The day's been a bit bit quiet. Stu's had a, another fish, and was it? How many have you had now today? Quite a few. 
couple. Two. Yeah, the 19, did I? Another 46. Yeah, 19. Oh, you had the 46 common, didn't you? 46 to 10. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Stuart is 46 common. Um, really, really nice fish. Um, really dark. I think his exact phrase was the, the prettiest fish you've ever caught, was it not? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've had a thir another 30 off the far margin. Thirty-four. Thirty. Bang up. We're going to continue the plan with baiting the far margin up, and we've still got at least thirty-six hours. So fingers crossed, we can bank some more fish, and like I say, we'll keep you in the loop. Oh, well it's the last night and Stu Smith is having a take while we're filming. You in? No, no, we, no we're not. Well we're all packed down, um, we've got the beds and rods still out, um, we took the winter skins off, they're all drying because the, the trees that we've bivvied up under are leaking. I've got to reattach the bumper to the front of the van. My swelling on my foot's gone down, so it'll be safe to drive home. And yeah, it's been a fun week. Um, try and aim for one fish a day wherever we go. Um, I'm on six so far, so to keep me still smiling on the drive home, I need one more tonight. And fingers crossed it's going to happen. There's still plenty of fish to go at. And yeah, I'd like to say thanks to Bill for having us and Ruth. And if you don't hear from me again, we've had a crap night. <laughs> Speak to you later. <laughs> yeah, so. Was it a crap night after all? Thank <laughs> you.